Hello and today we're going to give a brief overview on a recently released paper by Tom Gribben. Tom was a former student on the Strength and Conditioning Masters at St Mary's University and this was his dissertation project. The title of the study was The Effects of Change of Direction, High Intensity, Intermittent Training on Gaelic Footballers Running Performance and it was published in the Journal of Australian Strength and Conditioning in August 2021, Volume 29, Issue 4. Small-sided games have emerged in several team sports, including Gaelic football, as a time-efficient and effective sports-specific method of conditioning during pre-season. However, there can be an over-reliance on this conditioning methodology within GAA, suggesting that inclusion of other training methods such as high-intensity interval training or HIT. HIT has been shown to be an effective means to improve aerobic, anaerobic and neuromuscular capacities. When linked to an individual physiological marker, HIT protocols become relatively easy to control, monitor and to progressively overload. The challenge for Gaelic football strength and conditioning coaches is to select the most appropriate HIT method, then manipulate secondary variables to specifically target aerobic, anaerobic and neuromuscular systems that meet both the metabolic and movement demands of Gaelic football. During acute studies, the inclusion of change of direction has been reported to present similar cardiorespiratory responses to similarly equated linear hit intervals. The inclusion of change of direction has, however, reported different responses with respect to lower limb muscle responses such as the hamstring, muscle deoxygenation, higher blood lactate, heart rate and rate of perceived exertion. These responses have been explained as a result of additional upper body involvement and repeated eccentric lower limb muscle contractions associated with the execution of change of direction, suggesting the inclusion of change of direction provides greater physiological demands on both the anaerobic and neuromuscular systems. Therefore, the purpose of this study was to test the hypothesis that change of direction HIT program would result in more effective team sport running performance qualities than a similarly equated linear HIT protocol due to the greater physiological load elicited via the execution of repeated change of direction tasks. So how did they address this question? Well, they used a match powered experimental design, which was used to assess changes in maximum aerobic power, change of direction, repeated sprintability, acceleration, and maximal sprint speed between two different hit groups. Participants were matched based upon their velocity in the 3015 intermittent fitness test and randomly assigned to either a linear hit group or a change of direction hit group. They performed two pitch sessions per week for a total duration of 11 weeks as detailed in the table on your screen. Prior to the six week intervention phase, both groups participated in a three week general preparation phase with the details outlined in the table. Program volume and intensity for both groups were identical with only one variable change, that being the inclusion of two 180 degree change of directions in the change of direction head group as illustrated on your figure. 26 sub eight adult male Gaelic footballers were recruited for the study and were accustomed to HIT during previous seasons. The HIT program consisted of 15 second intervals between 85 to 100% of the velocity in the intermittent fitness test, which equates to around 100 to 120% of velocity of VO2 max, with 15 seconds passive rest. Pre and post testing, participants were assessed for aerobic power using the 30 15 intermittent fitness test and change of direction using the change of direc direction deficit metric by Dos Santos. They also performed a repeated shuttle sprint test used to measure repeated sprint ability performance, as well as 10 and 30 meter sprint speeds. The main findings of the study indicate that both change of direction hit and linear hit improved repeated sprint ability, maximal aerobic power, change of direction and asymmetry qualities but not linear speed qualities. Repeated sprint performance is a complex mix of anaerobic metabolism, aerobic metabolism, and maximal sprint speed, requiring high levels of neural drive with adaptations in all areas contributing to improved performance. Greater improvements were observed in repeated, the mean repeated sprint ability in the change of direction hit group compared to the linear hit group. Now, this is not overly surprising as a repeated sprint test included changes of direction which the linear group did not perform during training. Greater total accelerations and decelerations were performed by the change of direction head group. 
Previous studies have reported the inclusion of change of direction to be 30 to 50% more energetically demanding than constant linear running at the same average speed. Therefore, greater magnitude of change in the mean repeated sprintability can also be partially explained by improved adaptations to anaerobic metabolism. And these have been driven by higher energetic demands elicited from the accelerations and decelerations of the change of direction task. In addition to adaptations to anaerobic metabolism, Bravo et al. suggests that neuromuscular adaptations resulting from change of direction in their study could also have helped to explain the improvements in repeated sprintability. For example, Hader et al. reported that in comparison to a linear hit group, change of direction hit induced greater neuromuscular fatigue in the muscles affecting knee joint stabilization and suggested that change of direction hit as a potential strategy to enhance the neuromuscular strength qualities of the muscles controlling the knee joint, which could therefore enhance long-term change of direction performance. Similar improvements in predicted VO2 max were reported in both the change of direction head group and the linear head group. Both groups' loads were similarly equated with identical running intensity set at approximately 120% velocity of VO2 max. And previous research has reported similar VO2 responses and pulmonary demand between similarly equated change of direction hit and linear hit. Within the study, it was also found that improvements were similar for asymmetry in both groups. The improvement to the change of direction ability and asymmetry in the change of direction hit group could be due to neuromuscular adaptations. Based on Shepard and Young's deterministic model of change of direction, the inclusion of change of direction tasks could be responsible for enhancing leg muscle qualities, for example, strength, power and reactive strength, and technique. Improvements in change of direction ability and asymmetry in the linear head group may also be associated with neuromuscular strength adaptations to the knee stabilizer muscles, for example, the hamstrings. Increases in linear speed are also reported as a determinant of improved change of direction ability. Nasir Uden reported that hamstring force production is influenced by high velocity running distance. Following their intervention, lower hamstring force production was reported in the linear group compared to the non-linear running group. Linear hit has therefore the potential to place greater localized demands on the hamstrings than the change of direction hit. The linear hit group reported greater average top speed, greater average distance per minute and greater total time, over 20 watts per kilogram, than the change of direction hit group. Therefore, improvements in both change of direction ability and asymmetry in the linear head group could be explained by a positive adaptation to the neuromuscular system. So what are the practical applications? Well, this study should help better inform strength and conditioning coaches regarding their choice and design of future head programs. The results show that both individualized change of direction head and linear head are effective at improving maximum aerobic power, repeated sprint ability, change of direction and asymmetry qualities. The inclusion of change of direction does however provide greater improvements in repeated sprint ability qualities. Change of direction hit may therefore provide some minor additional levels of sport specificity compared to more traditional linear hit protocols for field-based team sport athletes, specifically in terms of providing significant improvements in repeated sprint ability. The inclusion of change of direction induces greater physiological load to both the anaerobic and neuromuscular systems. The strength and conditioning coaches need to be aware of the potential impairments to match play performance associated with elevated levels of metabolic and neuromuscular fatigue. In particular, SNC coaches need to consider the potential increased neuromuscular fatigue of the knee stabilizers and therefore the increased potential of injury risk. The decision to include change of direction should therefore be based upon whether SNC coaches wish to deliberately target these systems for adaptation and plan accordingly. Importantly, Linear speed should be developed independently alongside head protocols, targeting running intensities of 100 to 120 percent velocity of 2 max. These training protocols do not challenge participants' maximum speed zone to improve linear speed. If you would like to watch further videos, then follow us on Twitter at Stephen underscore Pat, or subscribe via the link at the bottom of your screen via YouTube.